What's up, everyone? Damn boys, back with another one. Uh, this is gonna be. I'm gonna put it into one video. This is gonna be an entire scheme on stopping the run. We're just cramming it together and shoving it all out there at once. Um, man, I apologize. I know I told y'all I was gonna have this out yesterday. <sighs> if I told you how many times I've shot this video, y'all would not believe it. Um, me and my computer do not get along. We are not friends. Um, that fool was my roommate. I'd ask him to move out. Uh, and he'd sure have to move back home with his parents because it's not like he works. I mean, ugh. So, this is a lot we gotta get to. Let's get to it. Anyways, man. Okay, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to identify some of the, the better runs in the game, right? I form clothes, stretch. Obviously enough, right? So what we've talked about in the past, I've given you a bunch of different things, you know, but a lot of it's been out of this 3-4 bear, which, is, you know, really had been kind of like the meta run D, uh, early this year. Um, I also told you guys the weaknesses of all of the defenses I gave you, right? Well, if I know that, y'all know that. We talked about it a little. Well, <laughs> everybody else, you know, other people will know that. So they're going to see you come out in that defense, and they're going to try to hit you where it's weak. Um... So as these things happen, um, as player overalls evolve in Ultimate Team, um, the game evolves and we have to change with it. So if you want to run the 3-4 bear to stop the run, at this point, Pinch Dog 3 and Cover 3 are probably the two I would, I would do. I went over the versatility of this Cover 3. Now, that having been said, when we're in the bear, there's no threat of a Cover 2, no threat of a Cover 4, right? So from a versatility standpoint, although this particular cover three is the most versatile, I kind of gave you guys some ways to, to do that, it's not ideal, I guess. Um, it's really not ideal. Because now what happens when they start hitting you with different pass plays out of those same running formations? I mean, for example, like this double outs, you know, you know, you, that'll smoke a cover three. <laughs> So we, we got to be a little more multiple, a little more versatile. The other things that I've talked about in looking for like a perfect ideal run defense would be the ability to shoot the gap um, or the ability to not shoot the gap and have the run defense still work. Um, so what I've done is I've found a way to get all those things. So on that quest, it led me back to the 3-4 odd just because now it's going to give me some more options like last year this pinch dog uh, two press you know i would run that against the run so okay well what does that do you know um this pinch dog three last year i would run that against the run sometimes too you know so let's get back to some of this stuff with versatility and shells we obviously know about the cover four drop show two um and then now the other one, which is our primary run stop play. So when we're running this scheme, if I know you're running, this is the play I want. And it's the Storm Brave 1. I'll show you against the stretch. The setup for this, which will be the same no matter what, is going to be uh, spread your defensive line wide and slant the pass rush inside. You just bring the safety down right here. So if I want to shoot the gap, Pretty much always, this is the gap you're going to shoot, but almost any run play, uh, unless they're going wide out here, maybe, okay. But So the computer has this gap with the blitzer here, right? So uh, when you see this gap, you'd shoot. Makes sense, right? All right, so here comes the stretch, and how we'll shoot the gap. Uh, excuse me with my two controllers. Everything kind of got blown up, and it just looked a little weird, so they had to come back to me. Um, that's literally the first time i've ever seen that set of animations on the stretch so it got way blown up but normally it won't get blown up that bad which allows me to shoot the gap if that makes sense it got blown up before i could get there yeah, that's more what it looks like usually they'll push your your defensive end out a little bit you know but that's more typical uh, now if i don't shoot the gap reasons maybe you don't shoot the gap maybe you don't feel confident in it you're not sure what run plays coming you don't want to shoot the wrong gap they've been hitting cutbacks on you uh, maybe they have a man beater that kind of comes across the middle of the field so you think you can still take it away and play this man defense 
maybe you want to play the man defense, but you're worried about an RPO, and you're going to try to go and use that as opposed to going to the cover four to stop it, which I will show you guys when we get to that part of the video. Um, nothing new, uh, just obviously something that needs to be used in part of the scheme. I didn't figure out anything new there. I'm not taking credit for anything. <laughs> um, this setup, though, this is me. So, if I do not shoot the gap, like I said, it still needs to be consistent. For whatever reason, I don't shoot the gap. You know, you had a linebacker standing in the hall waiting for him. He didn't know what to do. Consistency, I always like to show things a few times. Still got him. And on the safety valve, right, I haven't even had to um, get involved. So, very consistent whether you shoot the gap or not. Um, so now I want to show you guys a little lead dive going to the backside to show you that the backside responsibility, uh, something we chatted about with the bear, uh, is there. And then also, you're still going to shoot this gap, right, if you want to. Uh, you wait for this double team to occur, this guard will double team your D-tackle. And then you just loop right by him. Pretty simple. Um, if you decide not to shoot the gap, you do, there is a better chance that you have to get involved and make a tackle in one of these gaps. I'm um, not saying that you will have to, just letting you know that when they're running a dive, there is a better chance that you have to get involved to stop it. Oh, jeez. And then I... <laughs> okay. That's what I did. Yeah, so obviously still works extremely well. I haven't had to get involved yet. We'll show it one more time just for consistency's sake. Good defense, right? Pretty much any kind of run. Uh, I will say if they throw a pitch, there's a much better chance that you will be one-on-one -on -one with the running back. Um, you're not going to get blocked, though. Like, someone's coming through. You're going to have at least a one-on-one -on -one with the running back on a pitch, at least. Uh, so note that. Uh, different formation. Uh, this is just, again, another run formation I've seen a decent amount of. Uh, the single back, wing flex, close. Everybody with these close formations on the ball, right? So, again, same thing. We spread our D-line. We slant the pass rush inside. We come on down. Now, same gap going to be wide open. Really, an either A gap comes wide open for you to shoot. The computer's in this one, so I'll usually just try to shoot this one. Now that having been said, this is the caveat with, with again, with the dives. Um, if you shoot a gap and they have a quick cutback, a good user, they might hit a different hole on you. So be aware of that. I'll show you a way to kind of counter some of that too, though. Um, but again, I can shoot the middle, or the, the A gap. Super easy, I shot the computer shot, everyone's going through the gaps. <laughs> um, yeah, obviously a good play. If you don't want to shoot the gaps and you're just going to stay back, you know, it still works really well. Again, there's a better chance you might need to get involved, as you see there, uh, on a dive. Now, I'm going to show you a way to kind of manipulate the blocking. This type of stuff's never 100%, but it does work really well, and it does work a good percentage of the time. It works even better on pass plays, so if you're worried about a pass play, maybe it's something you can do to try to get the pass rush in on a little quicker. Uh, but I'm just going to come down and man up on the running back. I want to stand just a little bit closer to this guard than the blitzer. And my, my goal is to try to pull the guard with me this way uh, and pull the blitzer straight in. So to do that, we hold down both triggers pre-snap. See, he follows me, right? Uh, letting the computer shoot right in. You know, again, that's not going to be 100%. But it does happen a lot, and it does work really well. Um, and then it allows me to kind of drop back. So, a few benefits there. We get into the zone portion of this, is I want you to make sure that your, your blitz 
is, is coming from the strong side of the formation, like I showed. So if they are flipping their formation, you know, if you have auto flip on it, or if you just want to flip it, um, again, you just want to make sure that your blitz is coming from the strong side. Um, if anyone breaks weak side contain or starts to find a run play that can get behind that, you can just go ahead and slide that weak side linebacker on the edge out just a touch. Uh, those are the things I wanted to add. So now for the zone. All right, so now we're going to go over some of the zones, why you would play them uh, when things like that. So cover four we'll start with. Again, same setup. Um, now, what I will say is, let's say we think there's an RPO coming. That'd be a reason to play the cover four. Uh, that way we don't have to do any, like, guess, pass stuff. You know, uh, I don't like doing that. We want to be sound against the run. So if I think that X is the recipient of a bubble screen, um, and B is blocking, um, or whatever, vice versa, it doesn't matter. What you need to do on the bubble screen ones is you need to get your wide outside. You need to get him wider than the block. If he's wider than the blockers, everything will be just fine. Simple enough to remember. Um, now, let's say I think there's a stretch coming out to this side uh, with a slant on this side. All you have to do is take your safety on the slant side and drop him down. So if I think like X is running a slant on the back side of a bubble screen, you know, something like that, or on the back side of a uh, stretch, that's what I'm going to do. Obviously for the stretch side you bring the safeties down if you have time. I like to kind of get everybody down and wide if I think there's a stretch. Um, now the other piece of this puzzle is the click down defense. Now when we're in the zones we're going to play click down defense. So I'll show you a quick RPO tutorial. Um, so now okay the run's coming. When they hike it what we need to do is we need to click down like send spy. It's really send nearest defender is what it is. Uh, what I recommend if you don't have an elite controller, get one. Uh, I have this trigger set up to be my joystick click down. Uh, that way you don't get the air truck stumble when you click down if you move the joystick just a little bit. Uh, nothing worse than that. So if you have the ability to make that change, do it. Uh, and all you do is you just click it right when you realize it's a run. Uh, and what's going to happen is people who don't have run responsibilities will shoot down into the run. Because you're just going to send the nearest defender, right? And I'm going to demonstrate that out of the cover three here. Um, and give you just a clear, a clear picture. So, we're in the cover three. We're worried there's a run coming. Again, we spread the line wide, slant inside. I'm always going to hard flat if I think there's a run coming. If we're playing the cover three, we're always going to bring the safety right down. Um, so to see your run fits, to know who has run responsibilities, you hold down both triggers. And then, you know, if you're on PlayStation or Xbox, obviously it's different. On Xbox, it's X and B. Uh, it's just the, you know, the right and left buttons that have a icon on them, you know, and that's going to show you. So if I hit B or on the right side there, it's going to show me the run fits for a run to the right. So you can see we've got our contain on the strong side. Um, we've got a cutback defender, which is pink. Uh, if I do it the other way, again, you got your uh, cutback defender or like a read defender if it was an option. Um, that's another thing you can check your run fits to see how good they are. So like right here, the first thing that I notice is like we've got an issue with our uh, with our fits, right? So I want to get him wider, you know, for the backside. If I think they're running that way, if I th if I'm worried about the backside, you know that. So that's the kind of stuff you need to to monkey around with the plays that you use to stop the run. I would monkey around with this scheme because this is the scheme I would use just to make sure that you have the best possible placement. So now, you know, on the backside, he still, is, as a pink, can come in and close that gap, but he has a little bit better uh, responsibility on the backside. Uh, so those are things to just kind of know and consider with your run fits. Uh, so then for the click on portion, I'm just going to run this the first time. Um, and I just want you to watch the single high safety. Watch Woods. 
and what he does. Um, he, he takes a few steps backwards, gets himself way out of the play, doesn't help us any. Uh, that can be real problematic if there's, say, a lead dive on. Because you know, remember, I had I had told you that you, user in the safety, if there's a dive, you're going to need to probably, you might need to get involved, right? Well, we need to make sure he stays involved. So now watch how he reacts when I click down. So he shot right down into that gap, right? Um, obviously, I'm not like user and are trying to actually play run defense. Really, I'm simply trying to demonstrate the difference of a click down. So now I will not click down, and you're going to see he just runs backwards. It's like, oh, now, oh, there you are, you know. So essentially all you're doing is you're getting another de run defender down into a run fit now. So that's the advantage of the click down. That's really advantageous in the cover three. That's when it's really your biggest help. Um, <clears throat> now I will say this. Let's say I'm coming out into cover two, and maybe there's no threat of a deep ball over here, you know? So or maybe it, it, this could be any type of a set. Um, <laughs> of course, they line up all funky. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Uh, this could be like a, a single back with one wide out there. Maybe it's a goal line. You know, if you have the ability to bring the safeties down, because again, these guys don't have run fits, these high safeties, but you'll notice everybody else does. Your corners get in on the contain action uh, with cover twos, <clears throat> so the run fits work a little different from cover threes. But you now have two single high safeties that don't have any, any responsibility in the run fit, right? So like in a perfect world, you bring these guys down. In a perfect world, if you have time, right? That's all that is. But now watch them if I do not click down. They take a few steps back. Eventually they get out of the action because I have moved them down. Um, that's really the only reason they got out of the action there. Uh, but now and again, I'm not really like trying to stop the run here. I understand that. Um, so now watch what Heath is gonna do when I do my click on. He shoots right away and hits him behind the line of scrimmage. Pretty big difference having an extra defender behind the line of scrimmage or not, right? I mean, that, that's a big deal. You, you are now responsible and you're more responsible in your run gaps, even if you're outnumbered, because you have essentially an extra run defender. Um, so understand and note click downs and how important that can be. Um, if you'd like me to show you like in a game clips of me doing it where I'm actually trying to stop the run because I've been getting gashed here just demonstrating it, comment, I'll do it, I'll show it, I'll prove it. Um, I think a lot of people know about the click down technique. I'm not revolutionizing anything. So, you know, let that be what it is and speak for itself. Uh, so those are the zones I would use. now. As far as different shells, how you would deploy those zones, you know, versus what people are throwing at you, I leave that all up to you. <clears throat> I simply want to give you a scheme that gives you enough shells and back end looks to try to stop any kind of a run or pass play that they will hit you with out of these formations. Um, again, if I know they're running the cover one is my go to, that's why we started there. Um, man, I'm super happy with the way this turned out. I really am. I think with this scheme, we can now safely say the run is a wrap. Uh, run it. Let me know, you know, like, comment, subscribe, obviously. But, um, yeah, man, the same way y'all gave me feedback on the other ones, let me know what you find. Uh, I'm always interested to hear. Damn boys, enjoy. Oh, and I have another uh, custom trips dual high-low on either side, similar to my, like, my everything's open play. Um, I have a new high-low coming soon. Be out in the